Yo what's up guys and welcome back to Boundary Break, the series where I get to show you an exclusive look around the outsides of your favourite maps in Rainbow Six Siege. Today we're going to be checking out Consulate, Canal and Border. If you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and leave a like and let me know down in the comments which maps you would like to see in the next episode. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Starting off with Consulate, or to be more precise, the French Consulate in Ivory Coast. This is actually the only map in the game to be based off of a real location and a real event. Consulate has been in the map pool ever since the game's release and is one of the few maps that has been out for so long that has yet to receive a rework. It's a staple of the game, so let's go take a look. Starting off at the gas station spawn, if we turn around and head out through this van, then we'll first get to see outside the map. As you can see, it looks like a city. Funny that. There were lots of cool details throughout the map, such as these burning buildings with smoke rising out of them, which is funny because I don't remember this being Grenfell. If we turn around and carry on, we can get to what looks like some sort of stadium, as you can tell by the high walls and the floodlights above. It was only once I entered inside that my suspicions were indeed confirmed. As we enter inside, you can see you can see crowd stands on the far side and actually a scoreboard above the stand. Now based on the score, I don't know what type of sport this would be, I'm guessing like American football or baseball or something like that. As we leave the stadium, we can take a look around the edges of some of the buildings that make up the city. Now lots of these buildings have very strange textures that don't look like buildings at all, and it was almost like I was walking through some sort of hallucinogenic dream. As usual, I kept on pushing further past the edge of the map to see how far I could go before I was killed. I'd gotten really far and I was running for a few minutes and I was still inside of the map technically. The map looked really strange from this far away as you can see the sun rays coming up from below making all of the buildings look like silhouettes. I was getting really far out and it would probably take too long to bother trying to get back so I kept on going. After several more hours of running I finally collapsed and died. Back over at the map once again, this time starting at the police line spawn, if we head out to our left we'll once again be able to get out of bounds. As you can see by this area, it has a bit more of a semblance of a functioning society, until that is you take notice of the smoke plumes piling out of the building ahead of us. We can get really up close to this animation and see where it's originating from. Much like the Great Fire of London, it seems to be coming from some kind of shop front stool. As we keep weaving our way through the buildings, we can see more of the strange textures and designs that some of the wolves have. Now I have no idea why Ubisoft has spent their time doing these when no one will ever see these buildings and their designs, that is, until now. I kept on exploring this very confusing and maze-like map, thinking why do any of these buildings exist outside the map, until I got to this lovely green area. Enclosed by four walls, it seemed to be some sort of prison or solitary confinement for these three criminal trees. Passing through the wall, we can see these lovely gazebos towering up above us, and these, funnily enough, are actually visible from inside the map if you get up to the roof. Finally, I was able to reach this highway slash bridge that seemed to plummet off into the depths. Now this, funnily enough, is the same highway to hell from ACDC's famous song. But anyway, let's move on to the next map. The next map is of course Canal. Now this map is famous for its unique design with two separate buildings being connected by two individual sky bridges. Now I used to hate this map but I've grown quite fond of it and its funny design. But not just that, it's one of the more interesting maps as it's got a few well-known easter eggs and little hidden tidbits, as well as just an interesting map overall. So let's get into it. Starting off at the construction spawn, we're straight away going to head back behind us past these boats and submarines. This is where we'll first get to see further up the famous canal. Surrounded by trees and docks on either side, if we keep going further up towards this bridge, we can get to this lovely sailing boat dock. Now this is quite similar to the dock on Coastline for those of you who have seen that video, with lots of small, finely detailed boats sitting on the shore. And if we head up even further, we can get to what looks like some sort of oil refinery and factory. Again, this is quite a cool detail to add by Ubisoft as it gives the map a little bit more life. As I passed under the bridge, similar to those who try and cross the English Channel, I drowned. 
Starting back at the map once again, we're going to head back behind us as usual, past these bridges and locks. As I kept going through this wall here, I entered the magical land of Venice. Like usual, I have no idea why these houses are even here when it's so far away from the map, but it's quite a cool easter egg to Venice that Ubisoft have added to the game. This reminded me of Clubhouse from the previous video and I had a very good time exploring around in between all of the houses. That was until I entered the void. I was now in the realm of Shadow Venice, regular Venice's evil brother, as you can tell by the black oceans below. As I looked up from below at some of the buildings, I thought to myself if that TikTok account that finds the Polish flag in random places could possibly find one here, but I don't know, I'm struggling with this one. I decided to head back towards the map once again and I found this cool interesting looking warship. Now I don't know anything about boats, but I'd be interested to hear if any of you guys know whether this is based on a real life ship. It's got lots of cool details like the guns and you know, the guns. And just like me, it was hollow on the inside. Now that's about it for Canal, it's a really cool map once you get outside of it with some really strange sights to see, but overall it's an interesting map. Now finally, let's move on to Border. Now moving on to Border, and usually at this point in the video, I'd ask you to vote on which maps you want to see in the next video, but seeing as how this is the penultimate episode, and there's only three more maps left to cover, I just want to say a big thank you that we've made it this far through the series. I really hope you have enjoyed it. But anyway, with Border, Border. I don't even know where this map is set, somewhere in the random desert, but it seems to be isolated from all civilization and any presence of water, or should I say water, but without further ado, for the final time this episode, let's get into it. Starting off in the valley spawn, we're once again going to head behind us and travel up the hill. As you can see, there's a reason that this spawn was called valley, but it's quite cool to walk through this narrow pathway looking up at the mountains either side, knowing that you were never meant to be here. As we get out the other side of the valley and into the great beyond, you can see just how desolate and barren this landscape really is. Large mountains of yellow rock and stone make up the surrounding horizon. As much as you may be thinking to yourself, wow, there really is not much here, one thing I still would like to point out is how detailed the topography or the steepness of the cliffs, for those of you who don't know what the word topography means, and see just how detailed the ground is, with lots of bumps, curves, and little ditches. Now once again, this has no reason to actually be here, but it's cool to see the detail that Ubisoft put into their exteriors. Returning back to the map over to the east vehicle entrance, we're going to head through this gate and have a look through to the other side. There were a couple of lorries and buses queuing to get through the gate that have now been left abandoned, so I decided to pay tribute to my favourite woman. Once that was done, the only thing left to do was attempt to board the helicopter. Now, one thing I realised whilst recording this is that although the speakers say do not attempt to board the helicopter, the only helicopter in sight is this one flying above the map. And how does one even begin to attempt boarding a helicopter that's flying several hundred feet above the ground? I don't think we'll ever find the answer. But anyway, that is going to do it for today's episode. As usual, I really hope you have enjoyed. If you are new to the channel, please consider leaving a like to show your support and subscribing. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, there is a playlist on my channel to check out all the other 15 maps that we've explored so far. As I said earlier, the next episode will be the final one in the series. So until then, I'll see you next time.